From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Eight national championships, 48 SEC championships, 31 SEC tournament titles, more than 50 All-Americans, and an abundance of NBA stars help solidify the University of Kentucky as one of the greatest college basketball programs in NCAA history. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Macy, and welcome back for another entertaining season of From the Rafters of Rupp. Having your jersey hang with those championship banners in Rupp is the ultimate when it comes to Kentucky basketball lore. The 38 players, three coaches, one Hall of Fame announcer, and one devoted equipment manager permanently honored with their jerseys in Rupp have all enjoyed legendary careers representing the blue and white. Throughout this series, we'll continue highlighting members of this exclusive group as they share with us a first-hand account of why their jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. In today's episode, we visit with one of Kentucky's all-time greatest guards, Vernon Hatton. Hatton led the 1958 Wildcat squad to the national championship and was selected a consensus first-team All-American at the end of that season. UK compiled a 75-14 and 14 overall record during Hatton's varsity career and added two SEC conference championships to go along with the 1958 NCAA national title. Vernon and I began our conversation taking a look back at his childhood days in Lexington and his first introduction to the game of basketball at Bryan Station Junior High. I came here when I was six years old from Bath County, Owensville, Kentucky. And uh, Dad was a farmer, a, a, a tobacco farmer on the halves, and we'd move around from place to place. And, I, and so I worked all the time. I never did have time to play any sports until the seventh grade, and I went out for the junior high team at Bryan Station Junior. And the coach there was just the greatest coach. Eugene Sutherland was the coach, and, and he kind of helped me. I, I wore tennis shoes from the Army Good headquarters. They were green, 98 cents. And all the players on the team laughed at me, and I, that's all I had. And um, when I was in the ninth grade, there was a note, and when I got to practice, there's a package for you in the uh, principal's office. I went in. And I'll be darned, there was a great big package of white Converse shoes. One of the fathers of one of the players bought them for, for me. Dad couldn't afford to get, couldn't afford to get them for me, so, uh, but I, I slept with those Converse shoes. Vernon quickly learned that he not only enjoyed the game of basketball, but he was pretty darn good at it too. Once he entered the ninth grade, his talents really blossomed under the direction of Hall of Fame coach Ralph Carlisle. When I was a junior in, at, at Lafayette, I was a forward, and, um, and coach says, Hatton, I'm going to pl play you at guard. And I said, no, coach, I can't play guard. I just can't do it. He said, well, I'm going to put you at guard, and if you, and if you don't like it, I, I should say two weeks, and if you don't like it, I'll put you back to forward. So after two weeks, you couldn't get me away from being a guard. I could shoot any time I wanted to, and I dribble and I just kept the ball all I wanted you know he's um, just maybe the opposite from coach Rupp he uh, he was like a father-son type coach on the floor he was a drill sergeant but off the court he, he'd listen to your problems or whatever you wanted to talk about we loved coach Ralph Carlisle. Vernon developed into a starter for Lafayette High School during his sophomore season in his junior year the Generals defeated Paducah Tillman in the finals of the state tournament to win the 1953 Kentucky High School State Championship. In the final game, we won by 31 points, and that's a record still today. Uh, the sp point spread uh, of the championship game, it was um, 84 to 53. Yeah, 31 points. No one's ever passed that as far as the championship spread, but they've got more points than that but uh, not a point spread. By the end of his high school career, Hatton had captured the coveted Kentucky High School State Championship, won two 11th region titles, and received first-team All-State honors in both his junior and senior seasons. 
One of his most cherished high school awards, however, was not recognized until years later. They used to honor the person that was, say, the Courier Journal captain of the, of the season for all, all, anybody in the whole state, whoever was the captain, I was captain. And so 60 years later, they gave me the Mr. Basketball ring. Back, they kind of backtracked it to 1954 because yeah. I was uh, the captain of that team. And so the committee of the Mr. Basketball committee uh, voted me in to be the first Mr. Basketball, and I have a nice big ring for that. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Vernon Hatton after these words from our sponsors. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. Haddon's high school talent drew the attention of major college programs, and in the spring of 1954, he faced a major decision on where to play his college basketball. One would think his high school coach, Ralph Carlisle, who was an All-SEC player for Rupp at UK, would be guiding a star player to the University of Kentucky. Not so, says Vernon. Carlisle didn't, didn't really want anybody to go to Kentucky. Well, he and Coach Rupp had a falling out, and uh, he, was, he really liked uh, Mc, McBrayer over at Eastern, and he got two or three of Bill Florence and John Peck. They all went to Eastern. And they wanted, uh, they called me and wanted me to come too. And I, you know, I wanted to go to UK. So Brigham Young came out two or three times because we were Mormons, right. and uh, tried to get me and Suzanne to come out. But they didn't give scholarships. They give you a job, right. not much of a job, but that's what they had to call it. And uh, Indiana, and Illinois, uh, the U.S. Naval Academy. All the all the uh, Kentucky schools. I won't mention names, but one of them, uh, it'd be illegal to do it. But yet we wanted to give me four hundred dollars a month, a clothes allotment, um, a late model car, and a bank account. And um, of course, uh, I turned it down. To be recruited by Adolph Rupp during this time period, a prep player had to be one of the top prospects in the country. The Big Blue had recently won the national championships in 1948, 49, and 1951, and the Cats' senior trio of Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Lou Seropoulos had just led the 1954 squad to an undefeated 25-0 season. Although Hatton had proven that he had the talent to play at UK, Vernon figured it couldn't hurt to help tip the odds in his favor. All the freshmen went home for, for holidays, and I was in Lexington, so Coach Rupp said I could play with the varsity because they stayed around to practice. So uh, I, I was wanting to try to impress Coach Rupp, so I, I used to go to these wrestling matches down at Woodland Park, and they had these little capsules, kind of a blood capsule, they called them. And so you'd put them in your mouth, and sometimes you get hit while you're wrestling and you'd bite down on it and blood would spurt out. It wouldn't be blood, but all red, all your face. So I had it in my mouth. He let me scrimmage against the varsity. I was under the basket and I came out, bit down on that capsule and I came running out and that blood, red was all over my face. Coach Rupp said, stop, hold up practice, hold up practice. I said, Coach, just get me a towel, I'm okay. I don't, don't bother with me. And I heard him tell Coach Harry Lancaster, his assistant, we've got to recruit that guy, that Hatton guy, he's tough. Hatton entered the University of Kentucky in the fall of 1954. He remembers the team's first meeting. It's the same meeting every year. You get in, a, you sit down on the floor and you get in a big circle and coach her up at the, at the head of it. And he goes over what he expects of, of what he expects from you to be a player at Kentucky. And he, he says, this is a business, this is not for pleasure. So if you're not ready to, to come to work every day, it just leave now. Hadden recalls an early season freshman game when Coach Rupp imposed his demand for toughness 
and laid out his expectations for competing at the University of Kentucky. I dove after the ball and I, I was laying on the floor, my head on the floor. Here come Curtis Moffitt right on top of me and they hit my teeth right on the floor and knocked out one tooth. And I was laying on the floor and my bleeding and everything else. And uh, I thought I'd definitely have to go to the hospital immediately. And Coach Up walked over and said, Hadn't get you a towel and get that blood cleaned up and get your ass back in the ball game. So I learned right off the bat that you're going to have to play injured. Hadn't moved into a starting role as a sophomore. He averaged 13.3 points per game and followed seniors Bob Burrow and Jerry Bird as the third leading scorer in the team. The 1956 Cats rolled into postseason play ranked number nine in the country. Kentucky dropped Wayne State 84-64 in the Midwest semifinals before falling to number four Iowa 89-77 in the regional finals. UK finished the season with a 20-6 overall record. I made sophomore of the year that year, but uh, you know most of them they didn't have the real big, real big guys. Most all of them were six, six three to six five, you know, right in that area, and they all played forward or center. And I, I was at that height and played guard, so right off the bat I had an advantage going into the starting role in, when I was a sophomore. We'll be right back with more of our conversation with Vernon Hatton after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. In the 1956-57 campaign, the Cats compiled a 23-5 record and were ranked third in the country before losing to Michigan State 80-68 in the finals of the Mideast Regional. As a junior, Vernon Hatton averaged 14.3 points per game for the Wildcats, but unfortunately missed much of the regular season due to an injury that was more serious than the coaching staff originally thought. We went down to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, and I, Harold Ross is my best man at my wedding and my roommate while we were at UK, and uh, there, was a, there was a knock on the door I told Coach Rupp I had a stomach ache. He said, you big baby, there's a lot of players that play with stomach aches. Well, we played the game and won the Sugar Bowl. And uh, when I got home, I had a leaky appendix. And uh, I almost died. And I had an immediate operation real, real quick. And then I lost about 30 pounds. And it was like a ghost running up and down the floor till finally I started after about eight or 10 games. As Hatton, now a senior, prepared for his final season in a Kentucky uniform, tragedy struck the Wildcat family. Teammate Ed Beck's wife passed away from Hodgkin's disease prior to the start of the 57-58 season. Coach Rupp tried to comfort the team as much as possible. He, he tried to do everything he could for Ed and, and let him go home whenever he needed to and on. And uh, she passed away and then we kind of dedicated the season to her, uh, Billy Beck and and uh, we all got to know her and everything, but, uh, but it was a sad, sad way. And he had always uh, played harder and harder trying to, rem you know, remember her and all. So uh, that was a rough year starting out. In November of 1957, Kentucky started the season with impressive wins over perennial powerhouses Duke and Ohio State. This group of Wildcats had formed a unique bond through painful adversity. They were hard-nosed, scrappy, and did not like to lose. But we had the best team play that you can imagine. We had four of us in double figures, and then Ed Beck about six or eight points. And Ed was a heck of a defense and rebounder, so he was pretty valuable. Kentucky was on an early season roll when the fifth-ranked Temple Owls visited Memorial Coliseum early in December. Vernon takes us through that memorable game. It was a three overtime game, so the first overtime uh, we were uh, two points behind. We were in a huddle, timeout. Coach Lancaster stepped in and said, uh, Coach, uh, won't you let Hatton take the shot? I heard him say that. I said, Coach, yeah, I can take this. I can take the shot. Let me take it. He said, Well, Hatton, you haven't done anything else all night. You can go ahead and take it. And uh, Krigler took the ball out of bounds. One second on the clock, everybody walking out of the gym, 
as uh, as the game got started, I kind of winked at the score, the score, you know, like, give me a little more time, please. <laughs> so, so the thing was, sure enough, Krigler threw it in when it hit my hands, of course, the clock, and I think he waited a little bit, he must have, because I turned around and shot from 40, uh, it was a little on along, it was about 50 some feet, but I let him drive the nail where they said 48, 10 inches. And so it went right through the basket and it tied it, we tied it up. In the second overtime, we were tied again. Third overtime, we went ahead and won 85 to 83. I got the last six points in that third overtime. Kentucky's own governor, Happy Chandler, drove the nail at 48 feet, 10 inches, to mark the spot of Vernon Hatton's historic shot that helped beat Temple in three overtimes that night. Vernon shares with us what happened to that famed nail and they put in a new floor several years later and somebody called and wanted to know if they would, could take the nail out and uh, they said we'll, we'll cut that part of, of uh, the floor out and frame it and present it to you at a ball game and sure enough they did that and I've got it in Jeff's garage and uh, the darn thing's so heavy I can't put it on the wall and it'll, it'll tear the drywall off the wall it's so heavy I don't know what I'm going to do with it. We will return with more of our conversation with Vernon Hatton after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. Once again, Kentucky captured the SEC title in Vernon's senior year and entered NCAA play in the Mideast Regional, hosted at Memorial Coliseum. The Cats opened the tournament, crushing Miami of Ohio 90-70, then handed Notre Dame an 89-56 thrashing, which secured this bunch of Wildcats their first trip to the Final Four. Kentucky's first opponent in the Final Four was Temple, the same Temple team Vernon Hatton made the miracle shot to defeat in three overtimes earlier in the season. The only games they lost that year was two to us and one to Oscar Robinson in Cincinnati. Yeah. So they, they were a really good team. With 16 seconds left, um, Coach Rupp said, everybody get out of the way. Hatton, you got to do it again. So uh, they, they gave me the ball and, and Ed Beck came out and picked my man. I think he fouled a guy, but they didn't call it. You know, we were at home. <laughs> they didn't call it. So uh, I drove in. I, I didn't know where it was open or not. I faked like it was going up. Everybody jumped up and I went all the way over and dribbled under past the basket. And I'll be son of a gun. I, I went too far out, I had to shoot a hook shot, and I made the son of a gun. Hatton's last second heroics clinched a 61-60 win over Temple and propelled Kentucky into a final round matchup with Seattle University and its star, Elgin Baylor. Back moves in against Elgin Baylor. He's 6'7", one inch taller. We're ready to go, stand by, tap goes to Seattle as Baylor taps it over to Ogorek. We, we finally pulled ahead of them um, in the middle of the third quarter and uh, John Krigler had gotten three fouls on him real quick, and after he did that, I, I could start driving in there and just hope that Elgin Baylor, he would try to block my shot, but he would let me go. And so uh, we wound up beating him by 12 points. On March 22, 1958, at Freedom Hall, Kentucky captured its fourth NCAA tournament championship with an 84-72 victory over Seattle University. Vernon Hatton tossed in 30 points on the night, and along with Johnny Cox, was selected to the NCAA All-Tournament team. Coach Rubb tabbed this group of John Kriegler, Adrian Smith, Johnny Cox, Ed Beck, and Vernon Hatton as the Fiddlin' Five. So we'd fiddle around, fiddle around, and then pull the game out, you know. He just loved to call us barnyard fiddlers and all, because he'd, he'd get all the glory. He, supposedly that was the greatest coaching job he'd ever done, because we were barnyard fiddlers and not concert violinists, you know. But he did say after we won it, said, said one or two of you might be able to play in a concert, but you're still fiddlers. I mean, we, like, we kind of like the name. I mean, it's good, Fabulous Five, Fiddlin' Five. 
Vernon Hatton led the 1958 national championship team in scoring with a 17.1 points per game average. After being named to the first team Converse and Helms Foundation All-American team, Vernon was selected with the eighth overall pick by the Cincinnati Royals in the 1958 NBA draft. We talked about his memories of his early days in the NBA. That I got chosen with the Cincinnati Royals. But um, when we started to playing, they uh, had more Boy Scout ushers than they did fans that year. So, uh, but just after a few few games, Guy Rogers had the uh, he, he was drafted by the uh, Warriors, so he got them to trade for me about uh, before Christmas uh, that first year. So I went on to Philadelphia Warriors and uh, stayed with them three years. Haddon's NBA career of five years included starting roles and stops at Cincinnati, Philadelphia, where he was a teammate of Wilt Chamberlain, and in St. Louis with the Hawks, where he played with former Kentucky star Cliff Hagan. After leaving the NBA, Vernon returned to Central Kentucky and pursued a rewarding business career in which he established himself as one of the top auctioneers in the entire country. So uh, after I got out and uh, playing pro ball, I took my test to be a real estate agent and then uh, uh, took my exam to be an auctioneer. And so uh, I, I was an auctioneer for 50 years. Vernon Hatton has been a recipient of many awards during his accomplished lifetime. Yet the call to retire his number 52 jersey in the rafters of Rupp Arena still holds a unique place for him as one of his most cherished moments. I was really excited about that. That's, that's <clears throat> really an honor. So I don't know what the real rule is on it. I think 10 years before they want to, want to put it up in there, but, but some of them put the whole team up. and So anyway, it's just a real honor to have that up there. And I don't know if, how many they can put up there before they uh, start consolidating some of them together. I don't know what they'll do. Vernon Hatton led the Lafayette Generals to the 1953 Kentucky High School State Championship. At UK, Vernon was a two-time All-SEC selection, named a first-team All-American, and is a member of Kentucky basketball's prestigious Thousand Point Club. He was inducted into the Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame in 2001 and the University of Kentucky Athletics Hall of Fame in 2005. Vernon Hatton was selected with the eighth overall pick by the Cincinnati Royals in the 1958 NBA Draft. After his NBA career ended, Vernon became a successful businessman and auctioneer in the central Kentucky area and just recently retired. He was the leading scorer and proved to be the lead violinist on Kentucky's Fiddlin' Five, the 1958 National Championship team. Vernon Hatton will always hold a special place in the hearts of the Big Blue Nation and his jersey number 52 hangs in Rupp Arena to honor his remarkable career. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We hope to see you next time when we'll hear more tales from the rafters of Rupp. From the Rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Coal, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.